Hi, my name is Andre, and I have recently defended my PhD thesis in engineering systems and uh, electrical engineering at Skoltec Moscow. And the reason why I'm doing this video is that during the four years of my graduate studies, I was filling a table with all the events and tasks that I was going through. So I collected a bunch of data and I analyzed it and want to share with you my personal experience of what it is to write a PhD thesis nowadays. And actually, I found that there are many challenges and things that make this process uh, discouraging and uh, depressing. And uh, many of my colleagues experience this as well. So I hope that this video will help uh, people who are thinking about doing PhD or are already struggling with these issues. So without further ado, let's uh, discuss what it is to write a PhD thesis nowadays. And first, I want to start with discussing the overall uh, PhD time frame. And you may see in this slide the four years of my education, starting from October 2016 till October 2020. And I'm going to discuss uh, the main uh, features here, uh, the courses, internships, conference papers, journal papers, and uh, thesis. So let's start with courses. This is the easy part. Uh, this, of course, depends on the university you are studying at. But uh, at Skoltik, we had some compulsory courses and some optional courses. And you may see here that I took a lot of them. And of course, an obvious advice here is uh, to take as much courses as you can in the first two years of your PhD. Because believe me, you will not have time to study something not related with your topic at the last year. But we will get uh, back to this soon. And the second uh, point is internships. And uh, an interesting thing is that many students are not aware of the internships and of these opportunities, but actually, uh, internships give you a lot of uh, new experience and a lot of interconnections. And I, what I think is the most important here is that um, internships enlarge your team. It, they, they give you new co-authors, new ideas, and after time this evolves in new chapter of your thesis and new publications. So as, as soon as you understand your topic and your possible contributions, I recommend you to be proactive, to approach your professor and ask other opportunities at your university to undertake some internships. And my small advice here is, of course, that timing is important and uh, PhD requires you to plan in advice. So basically, this is a huge planning task. And this is the main difference uh, between a common office job and doing a PhD, that you have four years, you have a lot of tasks like courses, publications, conferences, and so on. And you have to plan all of this in advance. So if you do not really understand what you're going to do in these years, you should talk uh, uh, with your professor and ask him for advice. OK, now we come to the interesting part. And th this is conference papers. And here, by these uh, green circles, I show the conference papers publications. So you see this uh, letter P, which obviously means publication. And these uh, green traces, uh, by these green traces, I want to show how long did it take me to actually write the manuscript, submit it, go through review process and get the publication. And as you may see, that my first uh, conference paper was rather easy. It took me just a few months to write the manuscript and to get published. But uh, it was not so easy with the next uh, conferences. For example, the conference at my uh, in my third year of education, it was PowerTech in Milan. And the preparation uh, of the manuscript and the review process was longer than half a year. And my last conference, it was a power system computation conference in Porto. It also took me more than half a year to prepare uh, the manuscript and to prepare for the, uh, for the conference. But at the end, after the review process, uh, the paper got rejected. So this is also another problem that you should be aware of that uh, every time in academia, in every conference, with every publication, there is a chance that you could be rejected. And here we come to the most uh, discouraging part of writing a PhD. And this is the problem that sometimes your ideas and your work is not appreciated. And this, uh, as an example, your uh, papers uh, or your journal papers, your conference papers do not get published. And you think that your idea is brilliant. Your professors, your co-authors uh, say that you are a brilliant student, but uh, at the end you get rejected. And this is very, very depressing and confusing. But the situation is even worse with uh, journal papers. So let's take a look at these uh, diagrams. And you may see this uh, long paper with this long green uh, uh, trace. 
It is a journal paper that uh, we submitted with my professor to the journal uh, Transactions on Power Systems. And we work on this paper for more than one year. But at the end, after the first round of revision, we got rejected. And we were so upset with this rejection that we didn't even resubmit this paper. So it got abandoned. And you see, we, we can say here that one year of your certain work uh, is almost useless. And uh, I had another journal paper based on my thesis. I composed uh, this entire manuscript myself. And it also was rejected in the journal Applied Energy. So here you may imagine myself being uh, at the middle of the third year of PhD. And I was very depressed at that moment. Because if you count my publications, I had only one conference paper and that's all. And I think that many students get in this uh, sort of troubles. They study for two years, for three years, and they get uh, a lot of knowledge. They are, uh, we can say that they're experts in the field, but they have very few publications. They have nothing to show in Google Scholar, nothing to show in their CV. And this creates a kind of vicious circle because uh, everyone knows that you need to have uh, publications to, for example, increase your scholarship or to, com to complete your uh, PhD program and to find the postdoc positions. But after three years of hard work, you get almost nothing. And this was very depressing and very discouraging to me. And this is the thing that I wanted to share with, uh, with you, that uh, there are very few people who publish dozens of papers. I worked hard for these four years and I have published at the end only three papers, among which only one is a journal paper. This is a Q1 journal Energy Economics. So it's a, it is really a hard process and um, I didn't know about this uh, when I started doing my PhD thesis. So an advice here would be that you need to focus on your ideas and keep working because your ideas and your experience is the main thing that you get from your PhD studies. And uh, believe me, there are very few professors who published a lot of papers and got hundreds of publications during their PhD studies. Uh, most of them had significant boost in their career at their 30s when they uh, became postdoctoral researchers or assistant professors. So what I understand from uh, my experience is that you need to study, you need to go to conferences to find uh, new contacts, find new ideas, but you should not be so much depressed with uh, your rejections and with not many pu published papers. And finally, I want to talk about uh, writing the thesis itself. So this is the last uh, uh, green bar here. And you see that in total, I spent about 10 months to write uh, my thesis. And consider that I have all of the material and the ideas already ready and formulated. So this was just writing the thesis itself. And you see here some sections. The first draft, to write the first draft, it took me about five months. And then I had to uh, stages of review process. So this is also, I, I would say, a pitfall of many students and me myself. I didn't expect that writing a thesis will be so long and so difficult. I had some papers, I had some drafts, and I hope that uh, I will simply uh, combine these drafts together, get some sections, and write the thesis quickly, maybe in a few months. And this was a huge misunderstanding that I warned you about, that writing a good thesis is at least uh, half year or maybe the entire last year of uh, the PhD program. But let's talk about this in detail. Okay, so here I want to discuss the uh, structure and the timing of writing the thesis itself. And you may see my thesis here. And in total, it is about 230 pages. But if you remove the abstract acknowledgement, list of figures, etc., you will get the body of the thesis and it is about 195 pages and 49,000 words. So the question here is, how long does it take to write up such a thesis? And I want you to think uh, about writing it if you have all of your ideas already formulated and you have all of your results and figures. And the task is just to sit down and write the thesis. So how, what is your estimation? How long would it take? And here are just some random options to make this video more interactive. I put here 100 hours, 200, 300 hours. And as I said, I had uh, my uh, Excel table with all of the uh, tasks and events during the four years. And at the end, my Excel table says that I spent uh, 405 hours in total of text writing and editing. 
And this was a surprise to me because I, I totally didn't expect this. I thought that I would spend much less time to write the manuscript, especially to write the first draft. And if you convert, what is, what is 405 hours of text writing? If we convert this to months of work, we can say that this is two and a half months of non-stop writing. This means that every day you get up and you write your thesis until you go back to bed. But believe me, this is impossible. Your inspiration will uh, end up very soon. And uh, you, you also need some time for meetings and discussions with your professor. So this is unrealistic. And the realistic number is that uh, writing your uh, thesis manuscript uh, takes uh, five or seven months of thoughtful work. So you need to realize this in advance. And here, here, are, uh, here is a bit of advice that you need to start working on the draft of your thesis as soon as you understand your topic and possible contributions. And also you can begin with uh, writing the introduction and literature review. But uh, I guess many people would say that this is very obvious advice and this gives no additional uh, value because writing introduction and literature review is the most boring thing in the thesis. But the point is that this is not true. And I'm going to show you some ways how you can approach this problem of writing the introduction and literature review and make your thesis more um, engaging and more beautiful. So my first advice is to find a good review journal in your field. This could be uh, nature reviews or a journal like um, renewable and sustainable energy reviews. And search for the most cited papers uh, in this journal. And I believe that you will find very good papers that use unusual and modern ways of literature review. And uh, my main point is, is shown here in bold font and it is make your uh, review unusual. There are many ways of doing this. I will just share with you a few uh, ideas. And the first idea is taken from this paper, artificial intelligence and machine learning um, in demand response. And you see, you can plot here a map of research directions. So the authors of this paper made this very clever move that they uh, not just uh, wrote down the list of all related publications, but they created this beautiful figure, this map of research directions, and then they identified uh, sub-directions and some um, other branches of this research, and they wrote about the most significant publications here. So in this way, you can easily write the introduction and literature review section, like 20 or 30 or 40 pages of your thesis, and it will be really nice and beautiful. And you should fall in love with your introduction, and uh, this will be a good way to start your thesis, actually. Here is just another example. I call it characterization of models. Uh, in many review papers, authors create uh, access with some parameters like number of models, complexity of models, and so on. And then you can read a lot of papers uh, from your field, identify the key, the most influential papers, and you can plot them as dots or cubes, for example, uh, in this axis and, and uh, explain in words how the research evolved, what was the initial contribution, who was the first in this field, and how everything evolved. And lastly, uh, what I used in my thesis was citation network analysis. Uh, the thing is that there are many tools to analyze uh, graphs, and you can uh, download information about related papers uh, to your field. And then you can plot this and also identify group of papers, communities. You can uh, explain in details uh, what happened in your uh, research direction and what are your uh, contributions. So you may check, uh, you may find more information in my website, andrechurkin.ru, where I explain how I built these um, figures this keywords analysis, uh, community structure of uh, cooperative game theory applications in power systems and more. Okay, and uh, lastly, I want to discuss a simple question that many uh, PhD students uh, ask when they start actually writing their thesis, is how many papers to read? This is a simple and maybe a stupid question, but uh, as I said, I want to share my personal experience. And I think that I read not so many papers. In total, I read about 80 papers uh, related to my uh, thesis thoroughly, which means from cover to cover. And I read uh, only about four books. And uh, if you uh, consider this, this is not uh, a lot of uh, literature to read. And also we can conclude that papers are more important nowadays for PhD thesis than books. Uh, actually, because books cover wide uh, topic and 
uh, you are writing a PhD thesis, so you are focused on a certain niche, and that's why you read only very uh, related uh, papers, but not the books. And also, I want to say that I read another 100 papers, but it was not a thorough reading, but uh, rather skimming and scanning. I just retrieved some um, interesting information, some related parts of these papers. So what does this mean, this number of papers? If we divide the number of days in four years of graduate program uh, by 80 papers, we get 18 uh, days per paper. And if we consider 180 papers, it will be uh, like one week uh, per, per paper. And it sounds rather easy that what is uh, one week per one paper, this is almost nothing. Uh, everyone can read a, a paper per week. But the thing here is that you need to read a lot of papers in the beginning of your PhD. And again, we come to this uh, planning task that uh, you need to, to do a lot of uh, stuff in the beginning, like courses and reading papers to uh, get some free time at the end of your PhD. Okay, that's all that I wanted to share with you. And here we come back to the first slide and we see the uh, timing of my PhD. And again, I want to highlight that planning in, in advance is very important. Uh, being proactive with uh, internships is uh, an important feature of PhD and uh, you need to focus on your ideas and not to be discouraged with uh, papers rejection or anything else because you know you get your valuable experience, you get, you get your interconnections, uh, your academic background and this is the most important thing that you should uh, appreciate. So I hope this video was useful to you and my personal experience and advice and I hope you avoid all of the pitfalls that I faced on my way and I will be happy to answer your questions uh, regarding cooperative game theory, citation network analysis, uh, writing a thesis and so on. So please feel free uh, to contact me, send me email, you may find information, contact information in my website andreychurkin.ru. So uh, I wish you all the best in your thesis. Bye.